Welcome to Faith for Living. Finish. Lesson three. I do not own the rights to this music. The topic is pursuing wealth. The lesson scripture is found in Luke chapter 12, verses 15 through 32. And that reads, And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself, and is not rich toward God. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, neither for the body, what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn. And God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you with, with taking thought can add to his stature one cubit? If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not ye what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell that ye have, and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupteth. The memory verse for today's lesson. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. And that's Luke chapter 12, verses 20 and 21. The key terms are treasure, abound, and sufficiency. Treasure is wealth accumulated, particularly a stock or store of money in reserve, a great quantity of anything collected for future use, something very much valued. Abound is to have or possess in great quantity, to be copiously supplied, to be very prevalent. Sufficiency means the state of being adequate to the end proposed, qualification for any purpose, competence, adequate substance or means, supply equal to wants, ample stock or fund, ability, adequate power, conceit, self-confidence. Jesus warns against covetousness and greed and teaches us that amassing wealth and riches is not the most important thing in life. A wealthy farmer found himself in a predicament he had more grain and produce than his barns and storehouses could hold. What was his solution? 
he did not send out his servants to find the poor and needy of the land so he could share his bounty with them. He did not sell the excess to raise money to help build homes for the homeless, dig wells for those who needed sources of clean water, or establish programs to minister to the needs of others. His solution was to tear down the old structures and build new, bigger ones to hold all his bounty. Satisfied with his decision, he planned to spend the rest of his life enjoying his wealth. God's word says, every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loveth the cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. And that's Second Corinthians chapter 9, verses 7 and 8, 7, yeah, 7 through 8. It is easy to see why the rich farmer's attitude greatly displeased God. He failed to acknowledge God as the source of his wealth, and he had no thoughts of sharing it. One of the greatest strengths of the early New Testament church was the unselfish and generous nature of believers. The actions and attitudes of the rich farmer don't differ from some of the actions and attitudes of many who labor for decades, laying aside portions of their income or investing portions of their income to build retirement funds. There is nothing wrong with working hard and enjoying the fruit of our labors. But remember what Matthew 6 verses 19 to 21 says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Like the rich farmer in this parable, for some, the ultimate purpose of their labors is to amass wealth. They can enjoy themselves. All that we have is the Lord's. We are to consult God in all areas of our lives, including our retirement planning. There is nothing wrong with saving and planning for the future. This demonstrates wisdom. Wisdom always understands that it is God who blesses us, and we are to consult him concerning what we are to do with those blessings. What is not wise is str striving to establish a relationship with wealth instead of establishing a relationship with God. God takes pleasure in the wealth of his people, but why was his anger kindled against the farmer? Why is he called a fool? Discuss some ways with your family that people establish relationships with money how do these relationships shift focus away from relationship with God? Have you ever splurged and spent a great amount of money on something because you wanted it only to realize later that your money could have been better spent? If we aren't careful, our affluence can be misspent on things that many reasonable people consider foolish and unnecessary. According to the Bible, what are we to do with money and other material blessings? God takes pleasure in the wealth of his people, but he doesn't want wealth to replace a relationship with him. The end. God, we thank you for this lesson in the name of Jesus. Help money not be an idol in our lives in the name of Jesus, for we know we cannot worship you and mammon. Your word says you, we can't serve two masters and you are the true master. We use, help us to be good stewards with the wealth that you have given us and to use those blessings to be a blessing to your kingdom in the name of Jesus and so into good crown and where you want the, where you expect the funds to go in the name of Jesus. We thank you for ordered steps, Father, in the name of Jesus. We will bear fruit uh, according to your word that Jesus has chosen us to bear fruit and our fruit will remain in the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God and amen. God bless you and thank you for joining me today.